Hello everybody and welcome to kind of part two of using the guide. So I did actually change my profile picture. That's more of the f full picture of where my, uh, well, or no, here's where you can see it. My friends, because I follow a Ride. That's my original account. I'm only level 11 and that's OSCS, my open source computer science company, quote unquote. Um, basically that's just what I say for like you know my teaching tutorials and all that stuff it's all a bunch of free stuff but anyways that's I'm following them they're following me it's just me um, and actually let's go ahead and click on a Rye because this is another way to go to my playgrounds so if you go to the playgrounds you can see my Java one and Python so I did them both about a year ago actually I think it's a little more than a year now I think it was like January of last year so it's like going on a year and a half now but anyways you know pretty popular like it, it got big really quick and you know 240 likes that's actually pretty big for playgrounds so but anyways I do have the Java Java doesn't work yet it's not runnable in the browser um, the, the examples are correct and you can uh, copy and paste them into your own IDE or I don't honestly know how to run Java in just a normal text editor I'd have to look into that but um, I usually use Eclipse that's what I learned um, at CSU how to use or what to use uh, in regards to Java but for Python, super easy, especially compared to Java. Well, actually, I mean, Java's not so hard either. I mean, I'd say really C or like all the old like Cobalt and Fortran, like, or um, Perl, or like, I mean, and they're still not like impossible, mind you. I mean, there's also, I just noticed that <laughs> my background is part of that drawing too. Yeah, it's just me with some Sharpie. Maybe I'll do some drawing stuff at some point. But anyways, so beginner Python concepts. So that's one way to get to it. If you go to the ARI profile, the more popular way probably in common ways you go to and they even changed this recently this used to be if you look at my older videos they uh yeah if you go to community and then learn they also have a discord server forum all that they used to have a chat sidebar right here but they took that away because it was too hard to monitor and then in discord you can make super easy discord bots of course you can make bots here too and I actually had one of the I feel bad I haven't talked to any of the people from Code and Game for well almost a year um, anyway, sorry. It's a, uh, but I had one. There was one guy on here that was showing me his code for a taco bot. It was awesome, and it was, I want to say it was written in JavaScript, and it was on GitHub. I have the link somewhere, but basically, um, and he even he gave it to me. He's like, here, go ahead and use it, improve it. Just let me know what you do, or you know, let me know what you do with it, or because it's his project. I mean, it's his code, so like I might play around with it. And that's also I wrote a bot in Python, just following. Um, a tutorial but anyways enough yammering about that if you go to popular then you'll see mine Ooh, it's back up to number one two three four five no it's five it was number one and my Java one was number two when they first came out as you can see like this one's like you know almost a year it's getting up there 15,000 so it's good 200 likes that's a much better ratio than mine but you gotta remember um a lot of these are for more advanced stuff. Like there's like neural network stuff in here. There's you know Batman's Python, um, a lot of French stuff because uh, uh, there's a lot of coders from France, uh, Germany, Russia. Like this is a pretty well-known international tool, and so it was really cool. Um, unfortunately, I think that's also part of why they took away the chat was because around the time the Ukraine thing started happening, and I, I do follow you know a lot of Russian coders, and they they're good there's a lot of good coders here and that's the thing too just because of where you're at doesn't mean like how good you are but it, it's more refreshing in the sense that it doesn't matter where you're at you can be a good coder so and I'm not even good I'm still beginner to mid-level to be honest so I have a degree a certificate in cybersecurity and um, so applied computing technologies degree computer science uh, basic equivalent anyways doesn't matter so the last video we did, uh, we were using this tutorial, which is a free tutorial. There you go. You can click the like if you want. Oh, no. But yeah. Um, and these are all the sections. So you can click this drop down arrow here, and you can go through all the different sections. Uh, we started to rush through the last one, so I'm trying to keep these around like 30 minutes, you know, more manageable. Uh, I also have a couple of Code Wars videos out, and maybe we'll do some Code Wars to fill the rest of this. But first, I wanted to show you the most important thing about computer science or coding, and that is Google Foo so Python name origin and just to prove that it was uh, where? yes Monty Python's flying circus I will allow Google to know my location anyways um, 
it's Colorado. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, why is it called Python? I think that's a paragraph. When he began implementing Python, Guido Van Rossum was also reading the published scripts from Monty Python's Flying Circus. So yeah, that's you know, the name that was short, unique, and slightly mysterious. So Python. Oh, it's so fun. Like, I mean, yeah. So if you don't know who Monty Python is, Monty Python's Flying Circus, it is an amazing comedy group. Um, like, I, I forget their names right now. It's like Richard Gleason or Glenn Lee. Anyways, I follow them on the Twitters. and um, What are they, all their names? But anyways, I haven't watched them in a long time, but I did. I had all their movies back on VHS when VHS was a thing. And then DVDs for a couple of them. And then now... I think I can just watch. I know you can watch Life of Brian on Netflix. Um, the Holy Grail is my favorite. That's a lot of people's favorite. Uh, it's one where they're the Knights of Camelot. It's very silly, very silly indeed. And I actually did a. Anyways, sorry. I'm just getting nostalgic for when I did a school project and we did the Black Knight scene. Like, but I don't want to spoil it for you. Go check out Monty Python. But Python as a coding language. Oh, and sorry, real quick. That's what we did was Google Foo. That is the most important thing. Like, if you want to know, like, Python functions, function example. There you go. So you can see an example of a function of Python function. Now, W three schools is awesome. However, I do know people don't like it um, because it's just so heavy, intensive, like calc or processing wise. It takes a while to load and like do stuff. But well, let's just look. It has everything. Actually, that didn't even seem that bad, but. Like you got booleans, which is either yes or no, true or false. And it in other languages it can be represented by like a zero and a one. So yeah, it even has these little things where you can try it yourself. Although it's a little pop out window. So print if ten is greater than nine. Alright, well that's true. If ten is equal to nine. And in computer science and programming, it's almost always a double equals, because if you just use a single equals, you make that equal to that, although that doesn't really make sense with numbers, but if you had a variable and you're trying to check to see if like my var 1 is equal equal to my var 2, and you accidentally just put one equal sign, it'll make my var 1 equal the contents of my var 2. So, actually wait, we can even print that out. So, And in Python you do snake case, um, Java it's like camel case, my var 1, or even the word 1. You capitalize the first letter of every word, but that's Java. Snake case, you'd be underscores, my var one or, or, and don't do the double under. That's also called a dunder. So then, if you see like main, I think it's just like that. Oops, sorry, not plus plus underscore underscore. There may be that. I don't know. It's been a while since I've actually written a Python script. Usually, I mean, a lot of this stuff I've been just showing you how to do, and I haven't even done a lot of it too. Like I've got my older videos from a year ago that have a lot more stuff, but they're like an hour, two hours. That's back when I was doing Twitch streaming. So, uh, which actually, hold on, let's let's look at that real quick. So, if you're looking for a job, you need to get your coding game profile going and Code Wars, and you need to get to at least like level 11. When that that color changes, that means I'm a medium level. So, like, see, right now we are a level one. We're the green, so we're like the green horns or whatever. But if you go here, this is the broadcast page, and this is where current streamers are posted. Now, mind you, it's really hard to record videos when you're streaming because it does glitch depending on your Wi-Fi or your internet. And that's the other thing. I'm not even on hardline uh, internet, which means it's plugged in. I'm using Wi-Fi for this. So that's why I'm doing these recordings offline now. And then I can upload them. And I can watch them, make sure they're okay. Because I do tend to ramble. That's part of why those other videos are like an hour or two long. But anyway, so this is a great resource. So once you get comfortable coding, um, then you need to... Or it's a good idea. You don't have to do any of this stuff. But... It's a good idea to do that. And also, while we're at it, um, free code camp. So while I can teach you, you know, the basics of Python and stuff, so can they. Like freecodecamp.org. They also have freecodecamp.com, I believe. Let's go and try it. You know, free code camp. Then you just push over to get the rest. Dot com, and it redirects to org. And it's HTTPS because that was the lock. That means it has a valid security certificate. Sorry, I had to valid certificate. Um, let's see. Get started. Yeah, let's get started. Continue with Google. Oh, this is a single sign-on. So, okay, we were talking about Google Food. This is the next important thing. Once you have a Google account or a Gmail account, 
same thing like a Google profile allows all of Google's tools to link to you so all your Jamboards like so remember we have problem solving going on over here which was a whole nother video this is problem solving for everything not just computer science in fact I don't even think I've added computer science yet if you go through it's like communication politics religion for the self for housing like for people experiencing homelessness for US immigration and notice I said to US immigration because we're only tackling stuff that's in my realm like you know first I you know worry about yeah incarceration corrections law enforcement urban versus rural that's the biggest reason our politics are so messed up here in America so for all of my non-US viewers that's why we have the Democrats and the Republicans always arguing and it's urban versus rural like if are you in the city or are you in the country there's a bunch of country folk just angry at each other or angry at the city people and, and there's a lot in between like it's not a fair assumption to say it's all city and all rural but well, let me tell you the little mountain town that I grew up in was mostly Republican conservative and Trump supporters now today I know a lot of people that support Trump and that's fine I mean it's it's their opinion they're entitled to it so whatever you believe in that and that's all we'll do with that oh yeah and LGBTQ sorry I just kind of parked there just starting because like these are like the main problems in society and that's a cybersecurity thing actually preventative blue teaming and I'll go into blue teaming stuff however so if we go here click continue with Google or we do have our github but or Apple sorry I'm not a big Apple user but again people are free to do what they want Google's on top though and now you click here let's see is it gonna make me enter my password okay no so all right, that is the best thing you want to do because then you don't have to remember another password. And actually, Google just launched Pass Keys last month, the beginning of May. So, and this is May two, 2023. You know, so you don't have to check out the date. Um, so, if you're watching this, Google Pass Keys are available for personal accounts, and then they were just announced available for Google Google Workspace or Google Admin Console. And that's what they call the stuff that. Um, a lot of nonprofit schools use like my work um, and a lot of places so and even right there like technically you shouldn't be announcing like oh yeah my work uses this or that but most companies use Windows or Mac so like the answer is yes if you're trying to hack a company you know it's not that big I've, I'm sorry that just something that bugs me I had someone mention like oh you gotta be careful with what pictures you take and while that's true you don't want to have like your bank account information up on your computer in the background or any information like that, your birthday, social security. Birthday's even not that big. So like even like people taking loans on stuff and messing with your credit. Oh, there, there's ways to catch it. And like they're auditing these things and you know, they're looking for things to bust people for because it's big money. I mean, you know, you get arrested for some kind of fraud like that, you're gonna pay. Anyways, back to coding. Oh, actually sorry, no, back to Monty Python. Before I forget, it is tradition to put a Monty Python quote in your Python codes. Quotes. 15 of the best. There's videos. Yeah, that's Holy Grail. Or yeah, over there in the Camelot. The Spanish Inquisition. These guys are hilarious. Like, there's the movies. Life of Brian. The Meaning of Life is really good, too. You need to watch Li Meaning of Life and Holy Grail. Are like the two main ones. And now for something completely different is a, um, a collaboration or it's like a montage. Now, what is that? It's a hodgepodge of a bunch of skits, or it's a compilation of skits. There you go. Um, Life of Brian is funny. Uh, if you're a very devout Christian or Catholic, you probably don't want to watch it because it's kind of making fun of, not really making fun of Jesus, but it, it's a story about what if some random other person accidentally took the place of Jesus. Like, I mean, So it's really not that offensive to Jesus at all. It's just more like, you know, what if it was someone else? Like, and it's actually a pretty interesting story. Like, some average nobody that didn't have anything really insightful to say or anything. So, and then, yeah, there's, uh, and now for something completely different. No, that's the meaning of life. Sorry, meaning of life. Anyways, enough of that. We've got that. Um, the meaning of Python. Oh, and that's what that video looks like, the Holy Grail. Anyways, um, well, the meaning of Python. So, if we did this, we're in this editor. What you would do is up at the top. Well, first it's pound bing bang bin bash and wait that's a slash bin slash bat or no slash bin python I don't know it's something like that and again I haven't written the script so this is what you usually use for your first line and the comment means everything after that so the pound sign the hashtag whatever you want to call it um, every everything is green see it's it's changed a different color because it's just a comment but this first line is still read by the compiler or the computer 
or no, sorry, the processor, because it reads the file and it's like, oh, this is a Python file, or use the Python interpreter, usually it'll probably be like Python 3 or whatever, and then it'll go into your computer and find it. And this is Linux, by the way, for Windows, uh, I don't even know. I'd have to look at that. But, anyways, what you would do for Monty Python quote. And then you do another pound sign. Every line you want commented out. And also put a space too. Oh, it's 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 twenty twenty three. We can afford spaces. And see back in the day when they had to put code on little punch cards, they didn't want you to have like a bunch of un unnecessary code or comments. Like granted we had a ton of comments like explaining what the code was doing. Uh, like what if it was like a tool or utility in Linux programmed in I, I want to say Perl or C is what they do a lot of that stuff and I could be wrong but I've seen Perl I've, I've written in C in fact I have a whole book that teaches C and system admin in Linux but lo and behold I learned a lot of Linux admin stuff and then became a Windows admin <laughs> so there you go Windows Google and Apple we actually use everything so mm, but not a lot and yeah plus we're affiliated oh wait no we don't want to talk about that anyways um Monty Python quote strange right, and then put the quotation marks strange women lying in pawns distributing swords is no form of government and that's from the Camelot one so they're talking about the lady of the lake but you know it's just some common peasant and that's all the spoilers I'll get with that so that's like what you want to do traditionally if you ever write something really good so I didn't even put it in my uh my guide but I should have in fact I still can later but yeah. anyways so back to this we talked about Google Foo which basically means be comfortable with searching you can use Safari you can use uh, Firefox you can use um, Opera Google does keep track of your information and even if you don't sign up with an account like make a profile uh, which is what that is up here my little purple A and I won't click it because then it shows all of my family accounts and stuff too I did that on a recording on accident and like not good stuff to have I mean there's not a lot revealing like first names and anybody families better safe than sorry but so my point is yeah Google foo anything you need and see we found w3 schools and there's examples of that let's look at just anything else I mean really you should go through and click every single one of these but like so my guide goes over let's see comments here you can also do control F at any time and see it'll find it on the page. So comments, in fact, if we click that, see now it's going really slow. Okay, there you go. This is a comment. Oops, can't space it in there. See, I'm used to the guide. So with the guide, you can click anywhere in one of the things. So let's do, not comments, cause I don't think I actually had anything. Primitive variables? Yeah, because this one I had print out the type. And see, even though it's red, you can still run it. All of the other pages work except for the example algorithm with the, um, the Caesar cipher, which is funny because, and actually I'll show you that next. It's taken a while to prepare. Really? I mean, that's okay. Maybe it's just my internet. Which, and I want to leave it like leave it alone because, and even as I say that, that might have glitched. Ugh, that's gonna be annoying. I'm already like two thirds of the way done with the video, and then I might have to like. I can edit it later. Anyway, so the point of this is is whatever you do up here will be put up. The output comes out down here. So standard output. There's that. And I actually wrote this. You can change what this is. To see what type your variable is, use the built-in type function. That's what this is, the type. So print, this is your hello world. In fact, we could go to hello world. And then type example string. That's how you do it. So example string is a variable that you're declaring here and assigning this and that says it's a stir, short for string, which means a string of characters and or chars. But it's funny because in Java this would get you a char variable. And actually in Java you actually you have to do like uh, char example char. Just like that. And then you'd put a semicolon at the end to show it's the end of the line. But we're not doing Java, we're doing Python. So now this would be bad because this would crash the code, it would have an error, a bug because you're not supposed to have indentations unless it's a function my func and it takes nothing 
and it see it already auto tabs for me print boy this is my function and we'll do it again see how fast what oh oh okay so that's where we did a, a thing we defined a function now my func actually let's go ahead and highlight all this to control slash so that's just a little shortcut that's in a lot of um, IDEs which are integrated development environments technically this could be kind of in an integrated development dev environment because you can run code in it um, but anyway so if you do control slash so this th this thing the one slash it'll comment everything highlighted so we can even do this control slash so now we're only doing this code right here and again this is this is why I love this tutorial so like anything you're doing in code wars like sometimes it's like not the best like I mean it, it's a little awkward to get used to whereas here you can just do something and then run it boy this is my function see that's calling the function when you just do the function name and you gotta use the parentheses so that you know it's a function and then this colon means I'm about to define or def my func I'm gonna define my function and a lot of that is like so for the older folks that remember when texting cost 10 cents a text we used to text like the letter C the letter U and then L8 ER I never did the L8 ER stuff but like see you later or later or we would just try to shorten the way we communicated because it was expensive and our parents got so mad because I this was back when I got my first phone like seventh grade and like it was a flip phone and all I could do is text like oh I mean I could call obviously but and then calls cost too unless it was after nine o'clock and you know curfew and like I don't know it's ridiculous so now that I had a curfew I think I don't know I think back home they started doing anyways irrelevant but so for coding programming it's so you don't have to type as much and there's less room for a bug if you misspelled it so if I say my funk and I accidentally misspell it it's not gonna know what I'm doing it says name my funk is not defined did you mean oh that's nice I don't even know it's like so it sees that there's a function that's very similar oh I wonder M let's try this and see if it says that same okay so no my okay adidas like how close does it have to be Ooh, oh yep, there you go so one two three four five correct letters it looks like in order I wonder let's see uh, oh, watch this to just kind of cheese that uh, to oops I meant to go down here uh, uh, not too too far oh no now we're just breaking things alright to cheese that you could do print my foot um and then actually no control X and do my var equals control V paste that in oh, and that's the other thing too you get these hotkeys like copy cut and paste so if you highlight something you can double click to highlight a whole word and then you can do cut copy paste actually in here it's weird it has that is this just a Windows 11 thing okay maybe but anyways hotkeys always use hotkeys when you can so you can control exit or control V it or just control C it or just copy so anyways if we do that and then do my var there is a point to all this and then we'll do square brackets negative one so that means flip it oh wait. we don't need that so let's go ahead and comment that out we can leave the function alone because when the function isn't called it's just sitting there like it's just be, it's not being used and it I don't know some programming languages will whoops oh negative one we gotta do colon actually it might even be colon colon because it's start stop step that's what it is so what it did there is it only printed the negative one index so it just printed the last number if I wanted the negative or the last two I would have had a negative two but now I have the colon colon there you go so now it's whoa that's not supposed to happen 
Interesting. It's supposed to be backwards, which it is. I mean, if you do my function, it's easier to see. But then it's flipped the last letter. Ooh, I wonder why that is. So we're printing. Actually, you know what? I have a hunch this is just a bug. There's something in the buffer or anything. So if we reset the code, yeah. And then control V, paste it back in. No? Wow, that's weird. I don't know. Yeah, start, stop. So your lower limit, your upper limit. So we could even do at 5. Let's take this out. So that'll only print from the fifth letter on, or fifth character, see, unction. Um, you can stop it at 10. And it is a little funky. And this is actually, um, so all this stuff we're doing, yeah, it chops out so it's just the middle. This is called slicing, by the way. Slicing variables, which are strings. Uh, uh, I want to say, actually, here's a cool trick. You could do pound sign and comment in the middle of a line. So let's actually do 104. Oh, is that going to work? Yep, int object is not subscriptable. So you're subscripting something. Okay, so never mind. That's. I wasn't sure if you could or not. Ooh, actually, wait. I got this. Stir my var. Uh, This gonna work? Let's see if this works. So we're casting as a string. Ooh. Yeah. Although the slicing is left out. But here's what so if we take this out, we're just printing it. Yeah. So now it's one thousand four the number. You do print string my var or well, anyways, all of that is like string manipulation, which we have here and the, is it the intro no hello world okay yeah I guess that makes sense because it's printing text to the screen so each one of these little window areas is another place where you can put stuff in and here's all that stuff that we talk about here so these are the different things that are some of the different things I was doing you know print hello three times we just copy and paste that okay well that's actually this is oh and that's a new line too so but let's actually paste that in. So we'll see hello three times. Let's comment this out. So hello, hello, hello. And now let's comment this out. Let's uncomment this one. So now it's actually going to print that one. So it's new line. And that's why I use the backspace or the backslash. So that's when I did the backslash earlier on accident. It was all red. That's an escape character, meaning everything in between these double quotes is a string except that end. So, and you can use it for N, uh, T, for tab. Um, I'm trying to think of what are the other ones are. Or quotes and double quotes. Like if you wanted to do, let's see what that does. It's going to print like a apostrophe N, yeah. And then no new lines because now it's not thinking that's an N. Now it's thinking, oh, it's a apostrophe N. Space, apostrophe N. So, because single quotes and double quotes are how you say you want, or everything in there is a string. There's a bunch of characters in the middle, or a string in the middle of that. And I guess it's not, it's not characters we saw on that other page. It's still considered a, a type of string. Anyways, that's coming on 30 minutes. So that's a kind of a more more in depth how to use this guide. Actually, let's go look at it real quick. So we've got the example algorithms. Uh, yes. So I was just saying, did you want to save your changes? Uh, yeah, I said a bug bounty. There's no actual money in it. But so this doesn't work. Let's go ahead and run it just to see. Yeah, runtime error. So this is new. Container Linux go, starting container process cause, exec. That almost looks like... Copy. Py files, Python 3, stat files. No such file or directory unknown. The concept was secret. Oh, okay, that makes much more sense. I never copied the end of it. Woo. Okay, after this video, I think I'm going to go fix it. I'll let you know. But anyways, um, that is the bug, and I haven't figured it out. However, if you I'm gonna scroll outside of here, if you copy all of its code, 
and that is it's a function you're defining so everything that's tabbed in is included in this function then you get down here and like print whatever that function does with this that's the input and it doesn't run but if you do control a for all control v now we've got the normal rot 13 and it runs unless it breaks there you go that's what rot 13 is doing so it encrypts it so it's hello world blah 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 from this so this is the first thing that prints in fact we can let's do that real quick because we didn't really do a lot of this last time so we'll comment that out so now we're just going to print this gibberish rotated 13 values and it's hello world that's how I found that is because I can I encrypted that and I got the gibberish now why does this work so these are dictionaries they're um, data structures and everything in between these brackets is part of that dictionary. Now this tab, these tabs aren't really, uh, let's see, how do I say that? You can do a new line to format it to where it only goes so many out, and that's what I did here. We still gotta have a tab there. So all of these are tabbed in, and then it's contained by this, and all of this is still tabbed in for this function definition. And actually, this is probably should be like that, so you have a space between them. So that curly bracket is that, you know, open and close, I've heard those are just called brackets or whatever, but I call them curly brackets. That's how I learned. Same with square brackets and then parentheses. I mean, those are just parentheses. Just, you know, anyone who does math. like. So anyways, what's going on here is you have a bunch of tuples, and that's what a dictionary is. It's a key value pair. So for the key of A, you get a 1. So if the input letter is in an A, you get 1. If it's a Z, you get 26. Now, a rod 13 is where you rotate 13 values. So a Z becomes an M or an N, I forget, I want to say M. And it's also either zero base or one base. So since A is one, we're one based, meaning we start at one. Um, you could do zero base or zero index is what people also call it. And then that would be a 25. Every number would be one less. And you're just like shifting everything one value over because the actual value doesn't matter because um, the value corresponds with the letter. So if you change this to zero base, you'd have to change this one too. So this is the one that gets the matching letter from the number value. So every time it sees a 6, it'll put out an F. Or every time it sees a 22, it'll put out a V. So everything, it's all comma separated. So each one of these tuples, which is a two value, <laughs> another data structure, but and it's a two value thing, object, separated by a colon. And then this is an object of objects. It's, a, it's like a list of tuples. And really that is true. You could also do like my tuple list doesn't matter equals and then just to um well no because then it's like wait yeah tuples like this and one comma two two comma three i think that's how and then if we did oh oh we gotta go out of the definition and actually oh all right so since we're in the definition let's just do print my oops Usually, if you do tab in a com uh, in a command prompt, it'll tab complete. So if we print this list, it should because list uses square brackets, whereas a dictionary uses curly brackets. And if we run this, it's still only going to run once. So it's going to print once if it works. Let's see, it might break. Yeah. So then you're printing out the tuples. And so a tuple, and you could also do print my list at index zero to show you what zero based indexing is. This returns the first tuple. Yeah, I'm just doing all of this from memory, like I'm just winging it, but like, yeah. So a tuple is a set of two, and a dictionary is a list of tuples, and a list is an array of uh, variables. In other coding languages, you kind of start off with like arrays and stuff, especially Java, and array lists, which is like a mutating array, which like changes. Anyways, yeah, we're, we're well past 30 minutes now. Sorry to take, keep you a little longer, but that's part two of using this thing and general coding looking up too. It's a very useful skill. I kind of joke about Google Foo, but between that and talking to a rubber duck, meaning, well, let's talk about that real quick before we go. If you talk to a rubber duck, you're really just explaining your code to yourself, but saying it out loud so you can hear the logic. And when you say it out loud, it actually forces you to look at it closer and oftentimes, and that's why it's a good to, idea to go play a video game or go take a shower or go for a walk or especially walking too. Exercise, like even just 10-15 minutes of exercise, it'll get the blood flowing in your brain and it might help you think of the correct answer. You know, or you might have brain fog. Make sure you go eat something too because if you're hungry, you know, you're not yourself. Have a, no, just kidding. 
old Snickers commercials. All right, now we're definitely good, but we talked about Google Foo, um, how to use the Python tutorial here, how to find it on Coding Game, um, how to find me, how to find me again. <laughs> no. Um, and actually, I did for a while do a bunch of, uh, oh, no. Yeah, Clash of Code. These are oh, these are so fun. And these are people clashing. And there might be bots, too, just like Fortnite does. So there's, like, real people, and then there's bots. And depending on how much, yeah, I'm 44,000 in the world. And now here it says I'm 60,000 for overall coding game, that must be. Then here I'm ranked 44,000. And I'm mid medium level. I'm a level 11. So that's about middle of the road. I want to say it's still pretty good. But because I, I competed a lot and I, I've won a lot of them. But anyways, it's just little 15 minute coding challenges against other people, which this actually looks like it's just a bunch of bots. And they're waiting for someone to fill in the second half. So who knows? You might just practice against bots. But it's all useful because even the bots, they have um, code that you can look at at the end. So, in fact, maybe we'll do a couple of those. But let's end the video now. That's, you know, tutorial. What to know before you start coding. All right. See you in the next one. Let's see.